Hey, what's happening, Roland? <laughs> well, here I am driving in Arkansas right now, going into Oklahoma, going to the uh, the Bass Pro Shop U.S. Open Series. It's their seventh tournament. It's going to be held on Grand Lake. Now, the interesting thing that, that you might not know was I started my early career uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I lived in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I lived actually in Oklahoma for for uh, uh, 10 years. And so all my really heavy wins and most of my really big, big moments in, in my professional bass career were done uh, while I lived in Oklahoma. Uh, in fact, I was just red hot. I was in my 30s. And uh, that's where Scott was born. My son Scott was born in 75 in, in Broken Arrow. And uh, golly, Dad, this brings back so many fond memories. Now, where we're going to be fishing and actually where the tournament's going to be held this week, it starts uh, in just uh, Saturday. And that is uh, the U.S. Open Tournament will be on Grand Lake. And it's one of the big lakes in Oklahoma. And we're going to be staying at the Shangri-La Resort. And it's just, uh, Grand Lake is just, I think I've caught my biggest bass in the state of Florida in Grand Lake. It was a, an eight pound bass. I hooked an even bigger bass that same day. What was the irony of that was that I caught this eight pound bass and tugging at the lure at the same time was a much bigger bass, <laughs> about 10 pounds. I didn't catch it, but anyway. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time uh, in Grand Lake. And in fact, I worked for Lawrence Electronics. And that's uh, one of the deals was I invented a water clarity meter. This water clarity meter was a really cool deal. It was, uh, and Carl Lawrence saw how it worked. And I had a big article in Bass Master Magazine uh, early on in 1970 or something like that. And he said, Roland, well, I'd like to hire you. This is when Carl and Daryl Lawrence ran Lawrence. And uh, they said, they said, please uh, come and work for us. So I, I did. I, I actually joined Lawrence. And while I was at Lawrence, it was kind of funny, uh, I helped develop develop their curvilinear graph. That was their first graph that they had. And I also helped them develop a, a, a water temperature meter because I was called the Lawrence Scientific Fisherman at the time. And I relied on a lot of electronics. All the water temperature was a paramount in, in, in my quest of uh, of analyzing the water and cover conditions. You know, I'm a pattern fisherman, and that is, I, I'm looking at the water and cover conditions all the time that attract fish to that spot. And you know, things like the water temperature, the pH, uh, the water clarity, the wind direction, all the different factors of uh, oxygen levels, of course, are all very, very important in, in, in where bass will be. And here in Oklahoma, it's a, it's a prime example. You got some go and no-go situations where the water can be so cold and muddy that you can't possibly catch a fish. Or it can be so hot and sultry and that maybe you can't catch a fish. So there's the out here in the Midwest, there's some no-go and go situations that I was really kind of uh, fond of uh, on now. Now, of course, I live in Florida and we have the fabulous uh, Headwaters Lake that I go to all the time. And that has all the perfect habitat, the perfect cover and the, the, all the good water and cover conditions for a lot of really good patterns. But anyway, and that's where I was earlier this week. Earlier this week, I guided some people, uh, two different groups of people uh, out of Headwaters Lake. And it was a, it was an interesting thing. This one guy had never caught a bass over five pounds. And I said, I, I promise you, I'm gonna catch him. I'm gonna catch him a bass over five pounds. Well, I started off with the frog in the very first cast I made with the frog the other morning. I was at Headwaters in the Southern End. I took a spro frog and threw it out there by some some uh, some uh, hydrilla, a little patch of hydrilla. And I'm, I'm talking to him, I said, here's what you gotta do. You gotta skip that frog over the hydrilla and you gotta let it sit there, you know, right on the edge of the, of the water. This is the first cast of the day now. And so I'm, I'm, ex I'm instructing them how to fish a frog. And I turned to look at him and the two, the two guys were standing there looking at my frog and, I look, and I'm looking away from the frog, I'm looking at them. I said, so, and, and if everything goes according to plan, the bass will suck it in. About that time, their li eyes lit up and said, you got one. <laughs> so I set the hook and I had, had a nice little three pound bass. So that was a good way to start today. But unfortunately, it, the sun came out and the frog bite wasn't as good as it was, but I'll tell you what was good. These guys wanted to fish spin and tackle. I get a lot of people that want to fish spin and tackle. Well, that's fine. I'm, I'm all set up with the right kind of spin and tackle. I take a 20 pound braided line and I'll, I'll put a, uh, <coughs> I'll put a, uh, a leader on it, usually a 20 pound leader or a 17 pound four carbon leader. And a small hook anyway, I had this guy cast into to the edge of the shady side of these little patches of hydrilla. 
And sure enough, I mean, he was catching them. And actually what worked the best was a Cinco with no weight. I was taking, and I used the 297, that's the green pumpkin. I used the, uh, the, uh, Oh, the 904, out of the black and blue. I used a couple of different colors. I uh, even used a black one. I used a, a watermelon uh, red. That's a two, uh, 208, I think it is, watermelon red. Anyway, they were all working. It was all really good. But the key to, to the best bite was taking a, a Cinco with no weight and just and just being patient. You had to kind of let it sink because it's a five and six foot of water. And as it sinks down, you know, you just watch for the line. The only disadvantage with that is they don't often feel the strike. And this time of year, the water's pretty warm and the, the fish are hitting the, the the Cinco's and swallowing the bait. So we got hooked a few, but I'm pretty good at, at removing the Cinco. I come in through the gill with a pair of needling those long, needling those pliers and I'll turn the hook, just turn it right around 180 degrees and back it right out. And usually there's not even a drop of blood and I can unhook most of the fish. Uh, so he was catching fish. This guy, this guy caught the fool up. He, he, uh, he was from Utah. I, I guess he caught at least 20 bass on his own, but no real big five pounder bass. So finally I said, okay, boys, here's what, here's the deal. I'm going to show you how to catch a big, big bass. We've caught 30 bass now at this point. All we have to do now is figure out how to catch a big one. Well, I took out my big flipping sticks and you've seen what I got. I got these super heavy duty seven and a half foot flipping sticks with the big long handles and I use 65 pound braid. And I'm trying to find the heaviest matted cover I can find in the form of, of heavy lily pads, in the form of high hyacinths, in the form of hydrilla mats, in the form of just any kind of trashy thing I can find. And sure enough, I, I, again, I give them a, a demonstration. I said, okay, boys, this is what we have to do. You have to take the weight, hold it in your left hand, pitch it in real quiet and soft and let it slither down through those, that heavy mat and jig it once or twice. And remember, almost all the time, the bass hits on the initial drop. The initial time you throw it in there is when you get most of the strike. So right off the bat on about the third or fourth pitch, I caught a nice little three pound bass again. And uh, with the flipping stick and I jacked him right out in, in, into the boat. I said, okay, that's how you do it. But unfortunately, that's not easy to be done. You know, the problem, I, I do a lot of guys, I show a lot of people how to flip and pitch. But to be honest with you, not many people could pick it up in just a short amount of time. It's an extremely effective way to catch fish. Don't get me wrong. It's the best way to catch fish. But, <laughs> you know, you don't always, um, yeah. <laughs> You don't always learn that quick and so right off the bat they, he's waiting too long he the first couple fish that hit that he they dropped the weight heavy weight you know he's an ounce and a half to two ounces of weight so you got to hit them within a second or two or they'll drop it so they dropped they and they weren't sure what to do and then the people don't realize how heavy the tackle is so they're they're in a real big labyrinth of, of all sorts of grass and heavy cover and they don't set the hook hard enough and so they just kind of lollygagging along and the bass, if he's three or four or five pounds, will run around the reeds and run around all the stuff down there and about half the time get off. Well, that's what happened the other day. Finally, this guy, I fished him, slammed the dark. I said, I'm gonna get you five pound bass. I'm gonna get you five pound bass. I'd caught a couple, almost five, but I, I wanted them to catch him. And my whole deal was I wasn't even fishing. I just wanted to show them how to do it. And I did, and I caught some bass doing it. But I was want, more concerned on them catching fish. Well, finally, he threw in this perfect little point of, hy of hyacinths and hydrilla. His line twitched. He set the hook halfway. The fish took him down real good and, and it just humped up the weeds. And it was a great big boil. And he, he just it, it wiggled off somehow. I don't know what happened. It was like a, at least it, way over six. It had, it, had to been, it, it had to have been seven or eight pounds. Uh, so that was the end of the day. But because of it, because I was so diligent, because I was so helpful, and because he, he knew that he had lost a really big trophy bass, because we could see that. And he was really appreciative of it. So it worked out good. And it was one, he said it was one of the best fishing trips or the best fishing trip he's ever had in his life. Even though he didn't catch his personal best, he came close, he came close. So that's what I've been doing, right? And I'm, I'll be out here in Oklahoma for, uh, uh, for the weekend. The tournament is actually, uh, Saturday and there'll be 240 contestants and remember this is the seventh of the qualifying US Open events and the 40 top qualifiers from all eight divisions from all eight tournaments will go to Table Rock Lake in Missouri 
and they'll fish for uh, the big trophy million dollar prize. So that's what we're doing now. And uh, I really appreciate you watching my, my YouTube videos. And uh, I'm just having a ball uh, traveling around the country, actually helping Bass Pro Shop with, uh, with their events as well. I'm enjoying my guide work at, at the headwaters and just my fishing in general. You know, it's a lot of work doing these YouTubes. I'm doing three YouTubes a week. And man, it keeps me busy. It, between that and the promotional efforts I do, well, I'm working harder now than I've ever worked in my life. But I'm enjoying it a whole lot. So anyway, folks, hey, thanks for listening. Uh, uh, again, hit that likes button. We'll see you again soon.